checkered flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. Joining me, as always, it's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian Twining? Uh, definitely not my picks, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, this was, we we talked about this prior to starting, probably one of the most ridiculous and wacky weeks of recent memory in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, after I think we had some, some big home dogs, uh, or some big favorites doing well, a lot of week seven, week eight. Um, I I felt like a little bit of a correction (laughs) might be coming. I don't know if anybody quite saw it this way, but, uh, it was definitely, um, definitely in route. Uh, before we jump into anything, I do want to, uh, thank everybody for checking us out. If you're enjoying the show, make sure you smash that thumbs up, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, turn on the bell notification if we go live, we add new content, all that good stuff. Um, but let's jump into it. Let's recap the week that was and talk about um, all of these shenanigans. We'll start with our bets. Um, and I know we'll all, I'll let you, we'll rip the bandaid off of yours first. Um, Bills. Oh, what the hell happened there? Might be the most surprise. Like we were doing this earlier in the year. Like most surprising result. I think Jags beating the Bills. Um, but this is a couple right. weeks in a row where the Bills offense has looked yep. lethargic and against a Dolphins team that's terrible. You now Jacksonville, who's terrible. I don't know if it's a they think they're really bad and they can just kind of sleepwalk through the game. Because obviously a few weeks ago against Tennessee, they moved yeah. the ball up and down the field, couldn't punch it in at, at a couple key ventures. And that's why they lost that game. And um, yeah, that and, and that's why I wanted to hit on So it. For me, it's not it's not so much the fact that they lost, which I mean that's extremely surprising, but it's the way that they lost that game, only mustering six points yeah. against Jacksonville. Like, what is going on there? Yeah, yeah, it was a uh, it was a bizarre, bizarre, bizarre finish. Um, the Ravens game, but Ravens Vikings was was Ugh. probably the one of the most wild back and forth games. Uh, Vikings got to a big lead. Baltimore climbed back in it. It looked like not not only were they going to win but cover, uh, yep. and then Vikings forced overtime, and then obviously a game winning field goal for Baltimore. So on teasers and whatnot, you were fine. But if you took anything with the line, um, it did not go well. <laughs> Speaking of teasers. Uh, Saints um, lost on the field, lost. so that's that's not what you're looking for. Uh, Cowboys lost on the field. That that's also not what you're looking for. Oh, and then the uh, Rams. I, I heard they lost on the field, and um, you know maybe that's not what you're looking for. As a Titans fan, I'm I'm very happy to see my team uh, play incredibly well yesterday. Hey, I was extremely excited to see AD get in the end zone. Uh, yes, Adrian Peterson's dusty ass fell into the end zone. <laughs> Uh, he is clearly washed, and uh, Donta Foreman is definitely the answer there. Uh, so that, yeah, that if you'd have just played your teaser the other way, you might have actually uh, yeah, right? hit a winner there. Although the year under did uh, did cash with Texans Dolphins, but uh, w- more on that in a little bit. Um, AJ yeah, Dillon clearly looks like the better option between the tackles of the yeah. two backs speaking of gross games uh, i watched all four quarters of that and it was um putrid pathetic awful let me just say green bay absolutely throttles the chiefs if aaron Rodgers is behind center yeah yeah um and woo jordan love woo uh and then alvin Kamara um did not get to his uh over 14 yeah, he now. had a 14 yard rush <laughs> in which he got tripped and like fell out of bounds uh, very, the ball short very of indicative of week nine in your betting card um mine while better was not great uh very average very 500 four wins four losses uh, the lot, the wins were chargers minus two, which was a sweat for four quarters. I did not feel great about that. That was game. a great game, by the way. It was a really like, fun game. Uh, and, uh, underrated, really good game. And shouts to the Eagles scoring late to help me clash, uh, clinch that over, uh, got to 51, I believe. Uh, so 49 and a half, my best bet cashed 
Jalen Hurts rushing yards cashed. Um, and my Giants added them late. Ooh. Not only did they cover, but they win outright. outright. Uh, one of the things helping keep keep my my uh, betting card alive yesterday. Uh, Brandon Cooks got, I think, 60 or 56 yards. Uh, did not quite get to 65. Uh, the Panthers got dump trucked. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on in Carolina. Um Maybe the, maybe Adam Gase was not the problem for no, Sam no, Adam Darnold. Adam Gase was definitely the problem. He, he's, well, for Sam Darnold. For Darnold, yeah, I mean, he he was seeing ghosts. And then shouts to Mac Jones for just grabbing the defender's ankle and twisting it. Uh, very, very Grayson Allen of him. Um, and then the Ravens-Vikings, which I thought was going to be a low-scoring run-the-ball pace game, uh, ended up flying over the total. I think they uh, beat the total by, you know, what uh, – 11 points if it doesn't yeah. go to overtime i think i still lose but no because uh, i think i think if baltimore keeps it and they win in regulation i think they were 28 to 20 or something because the because the vikings scored and pushed to overtime so unless it was a yeah and then they unless it was an eight point swing so yeah either way um that game paced up way more than um way more than i expected so very very 500 um and we can talk about you know some of the other surprising results shouts to my titans for not only covering but winning outright um as a seven point underdog in prime time um what else did we have oh the falcons we mentioned them panthers uh the browns the browns are apparently yes apparently odell is the reason why baker mayfield can't play quarterback um, Did we not the, say this? Like the, log was the logic does not make sense. Um, Odell is a talented player. It's not like he's dropping every ball that gets thrown his way. It's just I don't know if Baker feels some sort of pressure to throw it over there or what it is. Yeah. Um, but they don the Donovan Peoples Jones touchdown could have easily been a ton of Odell touchdowns, and it just it just simply did, was not. Uh, the Texans Dolphins was pathetic. Putrid. Oh, that game but, was uh, just. If if Tyrod's gonna throw three picks and look like all absolute ass, I think they just need to play Davis Mills and see what they got because Davis Agreed. Mills can do that. Um, yeah, Chiefs, Chiefs uh, Chargers, Eagles was the game was amazing. Uh, shouts to Colt McCoy for not for going into San Francisco as a five point dog and uh, demolishing. Um, shouts to James Conner who yeah, I uh, Ryan in my Millie Maker lineup. Uh, if I had played, um, if I had played James Connor over Chase Edmonds, which is the the decision I was going back and forth with, um, I win four hundred instead of thirty bucks. Um, so that's <laughs> that was a costly swing. It was it was I awesome mean, to see Connor uh, Connor just scoring all these touchdowns and Chase Edmonds just yeah. being injured on the sidelines. Uh, we'll talk injuries here in a second. Well, so. Nobody could predict the injury, but there was somebody who did predict the fact that James Connor would lead the backfield. In yeah, no, you've been a hundred percent correct. Um, I was I was wrong. Uh, I think both of us kind of uh, in general were bet were wrong about that team. They've been amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah they've, shouts they've to Kingsbury who has been totally outplayed my expectations. Absolutely incredible. Uh, let's talk some key injuries. There wasn't a ton, a ton, as I mentioned, Thank um, goodness. the Chase Edmonds injury, you know, I, I think, you know, I think, you know, uh, you know, if you if you had him on like a fantasy team, it would be frustrating. But I think for, for the Cardinals perspective between James Conner and then what they can do with Ron Delmore, if they decide they like him and want to use him some more, um, they can kind of finagle those touches and be just fine. Uh, what's your read on the on the Kyler Murray situation? Obviously, they a huge win by letting him sit and they were still able to get a win um, a, a, against a division rival. But, you know. It could be another week. It could be another couple weeks. He's been banged up, you know, for for probably yeah. it seems like a month. Like I remember talking about it before the Browns game, yeah. how he's been dinged up and and he's actually been playing pretty well. Not as well as he did did when he first started, but um, considering how he played last year post injury, he's been much 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 better. But um, they gave him a buy that they gave him a rest that week. Um, let me look at the lines who we have today. Oh, they got Carolina. You know they're they're big time favorites. Do you, do we expect Kyler back for Week Ten? Do you think there's a potential? They look at this garbage Panthers team and go, "Hey, let's see if we can roll the dice again and and give Kyler another week." Because the most important games are going to be this, the playoffs and Super Bowl potentially. Um, 
you know, why is what's your read on the situation and where, where are you leaning with Arizona kind of, you know, as we hit the midway point, we're going to have to make some, some stances on a lot of these teams. And I think the Cardinals are a big one. Yeah. It's, I mean, early signs this week are indicating that the Cardinals may give it another week with Kyler Murray and go with Colt McCoy one more time, knowing that they, you know, they still have that one loss. They're at home against this struggling Panthers team. They've already proven they can win minus Kyler. Yep. So there's it, you know, the beat out of Arizona is basically saying they're they're not going to push the issue here, knowing that they are a legit contender. As and if now. you feel that way, getting the Panthers plus ten points, I know it's Arizona. I don't know, man. Like they have not been able to move the ball, regardless yeah. of who's playing quarterback. Their offensive line is is distru- is decimated by injuries well, right are, now. Are like, we really? Just- are we really going to back Colt McCoy as a double digit favorite? Well, okay. So Carolina just lost Matt Paredes, their starting center for the season. Cam Irving, he injured once again. There, he's looking like he's going to miss another week. They're down to their like fourth string right tackle, and yeah. they're going up against the NFC's leading sack guy and Marcus Gol- uh, Golan and Chandler Jones on the other side for yeah, the Cardinals. I day. mean, it. So I, I don't I guess... know if they could score. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I'm just wondering if this line is baked into, you know, Colt McCoy starting or if they're like, because I, I feel like there's a war, like if you bet Carolina at 10 and then all of a sudden the news ramps up that Kyler's not playing, this line yeah, that- goes to like three and then you cut, you bet both sides and then you hope the the Cardinals win by, you know, 24, 20, something like that, 17, 13, and then you, you hit, you hit both bets. I, I just, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like I'm not touching the Cardinals right now, minus the double digits, because I yeah. think that's that them anticipating Kyler returning. Yeah. And like you said, if McCoy's there, there's no way he's an, he's an extra touchdown yeah. value over another team, regardless of what they looked like Sunday against San Francisco. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a line I will be monitoring. Uh, the other major injury was Tua, who ended up not starting, and I was feeling much better. Um, I actually jumped on the Texans after that injury when, when Jacoby was starting, and um, you know it was a situation where Brissett is actually just uh, you know atrocious, but um, <laughs> Tyrod's like hold my beer and then right? keeps them in the game. So uh, they are um, the worst. From a Dolphins perspective, a team that I you know was already pretty banged up and pretty terrible. If they're mm-hmm. going to be like Tua is going to be sitting, if Devontae Parker is going to be sitting, um, things could get really brutal for them. And there may be some opportunities to to go against them, including this week uh, with Baltimore. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I know they didn't cover at home against Minnesota, but I mean, to Minnesota's credit, they at least have firepower on the offensive side of the mm-hmm. ball. Miami. And- the Vikings haven't won by more than a touchdown or lost by more than touchdown exactly. all season long. They're that team. They're, mm-hmm. They are the Chargers of last year, basically. Mm-hmm. It's like they're either winning or losing by one possession, mm-hmm. and it's it's a mistake here, a mistake there yeah. as to the reasons. So, yeah, no, I, I, I like Baltimore in that spot. It's one I'm comfortable laying the points right now. Um, yeah i mean no matter who's playing quarterback for right like i make my i make my lines before i even look at the lines for the week and i made that line 13 and a half (laughs) and 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 it's only seven and a half so that tells me you also like i mean to fantasy people or maybe betting wise it's not a huge addition but baltimore's Mm -hmm. looking at getting nick boyle back this week who is their like number one blocker outside of their offensive line. So he's like a sixth offensive lineman out there and which is only going to improve their running game against this Dolphins trash defense right now. It, yeah, this game could be ugly. So as we look at the the week 10 board and and keep the conversation rolling, um, as I mentioned, make my own lines each and every week, uh, uh, a exercise, I highly recommend, um, everyone take a look at, have, have some fun with, um, good opportunity to see how you think compared to what Vegas thinks and see if there's some differentiation. Um, the past month or so, Brian, I've been like spot on nail and nail and nail. And, um, there's, uh, three or four, there's four outliers this week by five points or more. 
that I was off, um, which is pretty, which is really significant. Usually it's a point or two at the most, usually half a point. Um, so either I'm overreacting or Vegas is overreacting or trying to get pub- obviously, you know, everything they do is trying to get money in. Right. Um, so, so the ones that jumped out to me, um, were first off were, were my Titans, uh, as three point favorites at home. Um, this line scares me as a Titans fan and what we've been doing with new Orleans all year long. I think the tradition continues. We back, we, we should be backing the saints <laughs> here, uh, who probably get it done on the field. Yeah. I, it'll be interesting to see if they, if they roll out Taysom Hill as the starter this week, even though today Sean Payton did come out and say Trevor Simeon played really good. And yeah. it was more so the wide receivers inability on the field and look for new Orleans possibly to go out and sign Odell tomorrow after he clears, if he clears waivers or today when this, when this is released. Yeah. Um, what about your Cowboys? Obviously laid a huge stinker. Um, do we just write that performance off? Michael Gallup could be back. Um, things are, are improving on both. It's sides looking good for Gallup this week. Um, you know, once again, Dallas is a 10.9 half, 10 point favorite, depending on where you look. Um, against Atlanta, a team I do not trust with at all. Uh, I think this I, either either the Cowboys like are, are going through a lull and and look awful here, and Atlanta you know wins the game, or I think if Dallas clicks and everything looks right, and another full week back for Dak, um, they absolutely demolish the Falcons and win by a hundred. So it, this is one of the more interesting lines that I saw because for me, my first lean is definitely going with Dallas on the rebound, knowing that Atlanta outside of Kyle Pitts and the reemergence of Cordero Patterson, um, you know, they don't really have much on offense and yeah. they do not have the running game like like a Denver who can go out there and control the clock the way that they did. And then they don't have the studs on the outside who are going to be taking corners one-on-one like Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, you know, um, Tim Patrick, yeah. even. He, he looked fantastic. So I think Dallas comes out of this, in this game quick and early and puts some points on the board really fast. Yeah. I think the Von Miller departure was a little overstated for what the Broncos are. I think they're very like, I, I think sound they're kind of, team. yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to do anything to beat themselves. They exactly. don't really have, you know, the explosive. Play. They have the playmakers, but you know, Teddy isn't going to facilitate a, a, you know, a seventy point, sixty point, fifty point outburst like having yeah. a monster game and um, throw for four hundred and four touchdowns. Um, but you know, I, I, I Atlanta is the team that would happily like be super wonky and like if you, I just I'm gonna pull up their their uh, their last results because it's been interesting at best um they've had a uh, a cake scheduled new orleans was by far the best team they've played over that stretch uh, bear with me really like we have said new orleans has been pretty jekyll and hyde so yeah and we've we've gone with them and against them them and the giants have been our favorite like bet on bet against bet on bet against so giants. um you know the, the the giants by the way who have a total i think of i saw today of like 21 offensive touchdowns in the last two years <laughs> So in their in their last, let's see, they've won four of their last six. The Falcons, they beat the Giants, the aforementioned Giants. They beat the Jets, who are atrocious. They beat the Dolphins, who have one win, and they beat the Saints, who are very Jekyll and Hyde. Um, Mind and you, we're playing with Simeon. Yeah, three of those four games were by the wins were by two or three points. Mm-hmm. With the only game outside of that being larger was the Jets game, and they lost to Washington and the um, and the Panthers, Carolina. which looks terrible right now. Yeah. By the way, so I, I, I you know, uh, to to our point, if you like Dallas, I would get on it now. Forty five percent of the bets, seventy eight percent of the money on about twelve hundred bets. Um, so you know some something to keep in mind um there was a couple other that jumped out to me um first the raiders um i made the raiders a favorite at home and they're a two and a half point underdog like at what point they, yes I, kansas city's I, kansas city is is, bro, is a broken football team they can't move the ball like the patrick mahomes i think at 85 yards and a touchdown yesterday something <laughs> absurd um, I, I, I don't know. 
teams have know. completely adjusted to their style of schoolyard football and offense. 166 and, yards and one touchdown yesterday. Yeah, that's like that's like a bad performance. Like any uh, uh, anybody else, and we're talking about should there be a quarterback controversy for that team with the most with the most recent performances that we've seen on the field there. I mean, based on what Dak and Cooper Rush did, I think we have that controversy in Dallas. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> well, one for one performance out of Dak as opposed uh, to. I mean, to be fair, two seventy eight, two seventy two, three ninety seven. 206 against my Titans and then 270. Well, that's going to happen when you're throwing it 50 plus times a game. Yeah, he's he's been throwing. Um, I, and this is something, though, that I've noticed the past few years with the Chiefs. They, from my perspective, I'm no expert, but they don't seem to have like a designed offense that is predicated on timing routes and stuff like that. It's more so just using the raw talent of a Patrick Mahomes' arm and Tyree Kill's speed yeah. to get past defenses. It's not They like are a, getting the big plays that we're accustomed to seeing yeah. and that really opens up things. I think Tyreek's been banged up a little bit uh mm. for majority of the season. I think that's causing a lot of a lot of turmoil, a lot of issues. Um but yeah, I and I I know the Raiders just lost the Giants, so this number is not where it should be. Yes, but the Giants' defense—we've talked about this. They are sneaky good. Like they—they've been pretty good under Joe Judge on that side of the ball. Yeah. So, yeah. like, it's no surprise that they were able to do that yesterday. Yeah, I mean, especially with Derek Carr, who is clearly what Derek Carr is. Like, he's been having a great season. But um, I think I think the Raiders are good enough, and I think they're committed to the run enough where they could run on this Kansas City team and and, and get out of there with a with and, a win. Don't forget, they just signed officially Deshaun Jackson today, which is going to give them that home run hitter once again, yep. which takes advantage of Kansas yeah. City's perpetual. Which was a big pro- problem yesterday. You could defense. see you could see Brian Edwards and uh, Darren Waller having a lot more attention underneath, uh, without having to worry about the guy getting behind exactly. them. Uh, exactly. And this is a primetime game as a home dog. I love targeting those, so um, the Raiders will be on my card. I can almost assure you. Um, and then what was the other? Oh, the other one was the aforementioned Cleveland Browns that are apparently fixed. Um, where is my line? I bet I th- I had uh, I had Cleveland as a as a I had New England as a six and a half point dog in that game, and they are a two and a half point favorite. That is my biggest. Uh, discrepancy of the week. What what about New England? says they should be a favorite in this game. Like, uh, like I guess... It, and, I think it's, it's just and the it's Fox world. Down to one, one and a half. Um, I think it's Bill Belichick at home against a quarterback who we've seen have issues against particular kinds of defenses. I, I think yeah. that's it. So it's playing the narrative of Bill Belichick's success against QBs. Now... This Browns team, if they're able to run the ball like they like they did yesterday, and with Nick Chubb fully healthy, I mean they are going to be really tough to stop. Well, that's the thing. I think the Browns are like they need like they're a team that needs Nick Chubb to at least threaten the defense. Otherwise, the passing game has no. And it, it's a lot like you know a, a kind of like what Tennessee did. Although yeah. yesterday, you know, obviously, the, you know, pre, maybe more like previous versions of Tennessee um, now with, you know, Julio and AJ Brown and, and they can be a little more, uh, a little more balanced, even though they want to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Uh, Nick Chubb really makes this team go and it is so important for what they do on a week to week basis. Yeah. He, he brings something different that no other running back, I mean, in the NFL or definitely on Cleveland, presents i mean he he has the ability to take a normal three yard rush to the house for 70 like we saw yesterday in the in in you know a split second Mm -hmm. and so the defense has to account for that and they're not able to back out of the into coverage against a quarterback who probably isn't the greatest at passing against certain kinds of coverages so yeah uh okay any other lines you want to hit on before we talk about games we may be looking to bet now I, so I think one of the most interesting ones for me as of right now is uh, Seattle at Green Bay. With the knowledge that Russell Wilson got activated today, he will play for the Seahawks. What are we doing with this line that's currently at four in favor of the Packers if it's Jordan Love, not Aaron Rodgers? 
come Sunday because he the earliest he can be activated is Saturday. So if we expect Jordan Love to play, I'm lining up to pound the Steelers. I uh, I mean the Seahawks rather. See, yeah. Um, based on the bet percentages and kind of how this line's moving, I think the expectations are Rodgers will be fine. Um, but you know Green Bay minus four, thirty nine percent of the bet, sixty seven percent of the money, and less than a thousand bets. So not a huge discrepancy. Um, but that tells me that the big the be- the betters are getting as much money down now as they can. Now, maybe that's a setup for a bigger bet down the road, because uh, as the week goes long, obviously, you can lay more money, less less risk for the books as the number kind of yeah. figures itself out. Um, for me, I, I like I want to be excited about the Seahawks, but Russell, they, like the coaching staff is just so dumb <laughs> and they love to run the ball, even though they have this explosive offense. But yeah. I mean, Russ, Russ's first game back after a layoff, like, is there going to be some rust? Is there going to be some issues? I think Green Bay is still really solid on the defense. Uh, I don't know if this is a game I'm going to want to touch, to be honest. I think I'm just going to to stay away and, and see what happens. Yeah, what I definitely you? I definitely see that. Now, if if I had more, more knowledge about maybe there's a possibility, like if it was leaning Aaron Rodgers not playing, I would probably be betting Seattle on the money line. Yeah. right now and I, and I think that is a good a good play right now because yeah. you don't have to bet very much to get them on a you know plus two to one on the money line here um but then come come later in the week it's aaron Rodgers one more test boom he's going to be activated then you can hammer green bay because w- with rogers back there d- with how good their defense has been playing i don't think seattle with a rusty russell wilson is going to be able to, you know, do enough on, on the defensive side of the ball to prevent green Bay from scoring, to keep them in the game. If, if, if I tell you that uh, both Rogers and Seattle are, are both Rogers and Wilson are playing this weekend. What are you, are you, where's this line going? Is it, is it staying where it is? Is it moving to a full seven? Like where you think it's going? I think it would probably creep up around five. Okay. Just because, it, like Green Bay is a is a good team. I mean, we saw it they, after after Week One. They looked like the best team in the NFC, right there with the Cowboys, with how good they were playing on both sides of the ball. And no, the offense wasn't the wasn't the greatest, but I mean, they're just Aaron Rodgers is is like that guy at the park who is just like oh, I'm just gonna do enough to win. You know, it's it really doesn't mean much right now, but ultimately they he is the best quarterback on the field pretty much every game he plays. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I'm looking at their schedule. They beat Detroit, not very good. The Niners, who clearly are not very good. Um, Pittsburgh. Uh, Cincinnati. Uh, Chicago's not good. Washington's not good. They beat Arizona last week, which was impressive. I guess, yeah, I, I mean, technically it's last week. I don't know. Still have one more <laughs> game to go. Um, and then they lost to Kansas City. So I, I, I don't know what to make of this team. Um, the other one that I, I, I know we, we keep lining up to do this, but the bills are getting less than two touchdowns against the jets. Um, are, are, are we backing a fixed uh, bills team? I want to know who's starting at quarterback for the jets. If it's the legend, Mike white, I don't know. <laughs> The one he thing I will so say, the one thing I will say is as bad as the offense has been for the Bills, and I granted it's been Miami and Jacksonville. The Bills defense has been awesome all year yeah. long. And if they're fine, and then all of a sudden Josh Allen gets his head out of his butt and and Diggs is catching touchdowns and Manny Sanders is catching touchdowns, they win this one going away. Now Zach Moss is in concussion protocol, which that not that they utilize their running backs very much. I that don't really understand other... this national narrative. Like I heard Collinsworth say it. I heard um, I forget Tony Dungy, I think, and then somebody today was talking. Mike Greenberg, who probably the biggest city, uh, is the Bills need to establish the run. That's no, why they're but, not playing good. But they need their running backs in the passing game. I think that's where the biggest loss is because Zach Moss has shown a really nice ability inside the red zone as a pass catcher out of the backfield. Sure, but like the Bills dominance over the past, you know, two and a half seasons. Have we ever pointed to the running backs no. and said 
that's important right there. Well, Josh Allen is their best runner. Josh yeah. Allen is their physical runner. That's what yeah. they do. They see when they get in close. Yeah. So I, I don't want to hear this nonsense about having no running back. And if, if you're giving it to Zach Moss or Devin Singletary or whoever Jabroni, you can get off the off the street <laughs> instead of Josh Allen having the ball in his hand to be effective. Like they could they make some better plays? Of course. Could they make some better decisions? Of course. But is handing the ball off and getting two yards on first down the move? Absolutely is not. No. Um, but yeah, if you if you think the the Bills bounce back in a big way, you you take the you take the thirteen and and you run to the bank with it. Um. So as we do that, before we get out of here, ten week ten best bets to make, or I guess not best bets, week ten bets. Uh, we were looking to make now. I think I think the Bills. If you if you're on the Bills, I think you take them now. Um, I like I think, the Cowboys right now before yep. it gets to double digits. Yep, I think that's absolutely the move. Um, if you think the Patriots stink like I do, you get on the Browns now. Um, and the Ravens might, on Thursday night, Ravens short week for Thursday Miami. Night. Like, um, even with I, Baltimore going on the road, I think if you can get New Orleans at a full three, I think that would be something to consider. Um, and then Monday night, uh, I, I, you know, I, I hate to do it because the Niners stink um, no. and I can't bet the Rams losing twice in a row but uh, the Niners are the right side there now let me ask you this question because you're you're closer to to the team sure why haven't we seen them utilize Trey Lance at all in the I, running game? I don't know I don't know if it's a Shanahan doesn't trust him or if they're being careful with them or like if they had a pick, it would make a little more sense, but that pick's owed to Miami. They don't have a first mm. rounder right now. So even if they stank the rest of the year, like they're getting a good first round pick to fill some voids. Uh, McGlinchey is not going to play that. this week. Um, I think he's done for the year. He's he's kind of garbage, and I don't know that it really makes a difference, but the, the backup was also really terrible. Um the running back has situation has been a mess when Eli Mitchell can run well um, and is healthy, everything else kind of clicks around it. Um, but when it's not, it's ugly. Um, the Niners front seven is, is really solid, really good. It's just, they're on the field far too much and their back end is just absolute gra uh, grass. Like Josh Norman is like Josh one, Norman. What one is of the that better options. Doing? So, um, if you like the Niners, I say take them on the money line. Otherwise, back the Rams because the Rams are either going to win this game by a lot or it's going to be ugly like it was against the Titans. And they're going to be like, what's wrong with the Rams? It's going to be a narrative for a couple weeks and then they'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just when I see home teams getting points, I, I just <laughs> my my I don't I don't look at the logos. I just take the points and run um, <laughs> and in, honestly, in, when... in prime time. Um, I, I can I'll pull the I'll pull the exact numbers for the best bets show, but primetime underdogs um, At uh, home. Are, are just incredibly like awesome at not only covering, but uh, getting the wins outright. Um, yeah. And with the with the direction that the league has taken the past few weeks with even Vegas not having a good handle on who who is supposed to win these games, yeah. like going into a matchup like that, which even both coming off of a loss, the Rams are clearly a better team, but San Francisco at home off a bad loss in a prime time spot. Like you, I would probably lean the home team with the points, but I'll, I'll probably won't be touching that yeah. just because of that right there. Um, I will also be looking at Tampa Bay really hard this week coming off of their bye week um, I will also be looking at Tom Brady props and <laughs> yes, general passing props uh chris godwin with antonio brown out we'll see if he you know I, I, you know a couple weeks ago he was on a crutch on the practice field we'll see if he's able to go but still uh, on a God, walking boot by the way godwin's numbers um have vaulted since basically he he gets all of that antonio brown work so um if i you know if i we can lock that in for sure uh, i will be looking at chris godwin receptions targets yards um and then just brady wants to throw and throw and throw and Bruce uh, Arians does not care if it's 42 to four or if it's 36, 34, he's going to let Brady throw a hundred times yep. if they have to, uh, to, to, to boost those numbers and to lock him in. So um, another thing I will be 
uh, monitoring is when the props come out, um, you know, lo- locking into some Tom Brady stuff. Yeah, I, I, I like that call, especially off the bye week. I will not be betting Patrick Mahomes rushing props for the third week in a row. Um, and that means it'll probably hit. So um, line up it as as you see fit. Um, any other things you want to lock in now, Brian, or anything you want to you want to make a bet? Um, anything you're like, you know, I mean, I, I got to say, looking at it right now, because they haven't played yet today. But I mean, the Steelers at under double digits currently at home hosting Detroit looks really appealing yeah. at the moment. I think that probably gets upwards, you know, 12 even maybe 13 by Sunday. Just Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to see what the bears look like. Um, it's a very interesting line. Very interesting game. It's a tough uh, matchup for Chicago because Pittsburgh's weakness on defense is actually the back end. So it'll be interesting to see if Chicago can take advantage of you'd that. You'd think with Justin Fields and Darnell Mooney and Allen Robinson and Cole Komet, they would actually throw, which they have been doing a little bit more uh, watching too much bears as of late. Um, but I think, Matt Nagy's back, so God, so yeah, bad. they look so much better without him. Like I don't, I don't know how these moronic coaches keep their job, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, appreciate everybody who made it this far. If you're still enjoying the content, subscribe, like, review, all that good stuff. Yes, we'll be back yes. on Friday with our best bets, with some player props, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we get trending trending in the right direction. Brian's <laughs> yeah. whining, uh, and we'll talk to you guys next time.